right guys, we're here in my shop today and uh, one thing I want to go over is how I do my antiquing. I've had a lot of questions on that, so I'm going to show you exactly how I do it um, and how I achieve this look. This is the piece that we did for the painting video, the last video that we did. I'm just going to antique it and show you how I do that. I will tell you, I only use uh, Fibings Antique. A lot of people are using the uh, EcoFlow gels and stuff like that. I don't have any experience with that, so I can't help you there. I've had some emails come in where they've the EcoFlow is doing this or doing that. I, I don't personally have any experience with that, so I don't know. All right, let's get over there and let's see if we can antique this thing and I can show you all what we're doing and you can kind of see if it works for you in your shop. If it does, great. If you have another technique, send me an email or something and let me know and maybe I'll try it um, and see. I'm always looking for better ways to do things. So, um, but let me show you what I do. All right, guys, here's our piece of leather. Uh, we've already done all our dye work, our paint work, and we've oiled it to get the natural leather portions to the color that we want and that's completely up to you. I'm just going to take this tan coat and work it in with a clean piece of sheepskin and I try to work that down into the cracks and crevices and and just put it on. I put it on pretty a pretty good coat. You can do two light coats if you prefer. Um, that's not as crucial. Um, sometimes it works better with two. I normally just use one. But once we've put the bag coat or the tan coat on there, now we're just going to let that dry and it usually takes 30 minutes to an hour depending on where you're at. So now here's our antique paste and uh, I buy those big quarts but you can buy them in smaller quantities and I use these I think they're little craft sticks or two uh, popsicle sticks but I use them to get the antique out and you don't waste as much and I just apply some to the a piece of cardboard or a piece of board or something just so that you can get it off and then you can scrape it off with those sticks and put what you didn't use back in the uh, in the jar and that helps out a lot and I'm just going to take a cl another clean sheepskin and I trim those down to where I don't have too many loose hairs and just grab some antique and we're just going to work it in this tan coat has dried really well and so now we're just going to work it all around and you can go different directions circles back and forth biggest deal here is just to be sure that you get all of the cuts, undercuts, all your bevels, just be sure you don't have any missing portions in there because you'll see that when you're finished, you'll see a spot where you miss. So just be sure you work it down real good. And this will also bring out a lot of the decorative cuts that you did originally in your paint, in any painted flowers or anything like that. It'll pull those back out and uh, darken them up. So now we're just going to take that antique and work it off with a really good clean uh, another piece of sheepskin and that first pad I just kinda take off as much as I can and then I'll grab another clean one and then buff it and when I'm buffing I'm basically trying to get all the antique off that I can as much as possible and because um, you don't want it to look muddy you don't want it to have just way too much down in there and it looks too gummy so and that's what we've got now you can see that that looks a little dirty it's darkened up our base color of our natural leather that we're not going to worry about that right now we're going to go ahead and leave it and let this dry for probably a, an hour you know 30 minutes to an hour depending on humidity and now we've come back here and as you can see it's darkened up even more as it's dried so now well, this is the most important step here this is where a lot of people think they've messed up we're going to take another clean pad and some tan coat and apply a final coat this final coat is going to clean the bulk of what's going on um, with the antique and the muddiness so here you can see that we're as we're wiping down with this new portion of uh, tan coat we're actually washing the top levels of that leather and that and the tooling and it's bringing back the natural look of the leather so whatever your base color was that you started with you should near that again after this final coat so if it looks dark after you've antiqued it there's no need to really worry about it until you come back to do that final coat that final coat will actually lift and clean all of your areas and as far as painted flowers you can do more or less depending on how dark you want your whites and your lighter colors to look antiqued you can continue applying that bag that tan coat to get a lot of that off but as you can see there, that looks a lot cleaner. It looks back to the original color with a nice uh, texture and enhancement of those cuts and undercuts and bevels. 
And now we're just going to clean off our palette and put the rest of our leftover antique back in the jar. Um, so that it'll be good. As long as you keep the lid on it, that stuff will be good for, for a while. So if you'll kind of set up a, a little area like this, you can kind of always come to that one spot and you've got everything set out to get your antique job done. And in this picture here, you can see how clean that base color leather is. All right, guys, so that's how I do it. Um, as you can see, it's pretty quick. Uh, some guys will let that antique sit on there a little longer. That's up to you. But anyway, how that's how I do it. As you can see, there's uh, turns out pretty good. It's pretty clean. It's pretty fast. If you're having any trouble, don't hesitate to email me or ask me or, or send me a picture or something. Um, I can help walk you through it. It's hardly ever just a throwaway piece. You know what I mean? You probably you hardly ever get to the point where it's just it's done. You've got to throw it away. It's hardly ever one of the things where it's not like spill a dye on something. So don't be scared of it. It'll really really bring out your tooling and bring out your cuts and your flow and, and really make that project look really well, look really good. I personally believe everything needs to be antique just to enhance the, uh, the natural tooling. Um, check out the Five Beings products if you're using the EcoFlow gels. If they're working for you, keep using them. I just have had really good luck with these. I've used them for years. Um, I, I just, I, I like the antique paste. Um, so try Five Beings. Um, I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I just it's the best product that I use. So that's what I use um, and Besides you know anytime they do anything environmentally safe or you know, they're gonna make it green go green It just tends to not work Like it doesn't work anymore. That's what go green means to me if it says go green I don't buy it because it probably doesn't work um, okay. Visit us at dgsaddlery.com. You can send us an email from there if you want to get in contact with us and all the other ways that you can you can kind of become part of our community. Be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video if you all found it useful and you know somebody's having some trouble with their antiquing, share the video. We'd really appreciate that. Um, we're trying to get our subscribership up as much as possible on YouTube so we can continue to do more and more videos and, uh, and hopefully they're getting better as we go along. But yeah, subscribe to our channel.